In this video, we're going to create a timetable, a table which has the time every 10 minutes in SQL Server. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. In an earlier video, we created a date table which had every single date from the start of one year to the end of another. In the comments of that video, I had the following comment. Great video. So is it possible to create the same process but with date time increment every 10 minutes? And the answer is yes it is. And this is how we're going to do that in this video. So first of all, we need a table. So I've created a table here and I can have my field here and it will either be date time or time. We're going to start off with date time. So first of all, I need to have a row which has one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And then we can change that into 10 minutes. So the way to do this is to have select row number, and I will put in the order section, just something that says, I don't really care what order it's in. The from has to be something that you have. And I'm going to use a table, which is a system table. So I know I've got it and you've got it. So sys.objects. So if I run this, you can see that we now have numbers one to 124 on my version. However, that might not be enough. So I'm going to have a cross join with exactly the same object, sys.objects, as B. So what this is going to do is it's going to create 124 rows for the first row in sys.objects and then another 124 rows. In other words, it's going to do 124 times 124. So at the end, we have got 15,376 rows. That should be enough to be getting on with. So now I want it to start from a particular time. Well, let's say I want it to start from December the 31st, 2029. So what I'm going to do is have this row number and I'm going to use the function called date add. That's all one word. And I'm going to add in minutes, 10 minutes multiplied by the row number that we see here. So it's going to start off with saying, I want to add minutes, 10 of them per row. And I want it to start on the 31st of December, 2029 at midnight and close the brackets. So if I run this, you can see that we start off where the row number is one that gets multiplied by 10 to 10. So we add 10 minutes to this particular time and date. So that gives us that date and 10 minutes and the next row 20 and so on. So this keeps on going and going. And if we need even more, then I'll cross join it again. So cross join as C. And if I run this, it will take a bit longer maybe, but we'll go all the way down, still calculating, and we'll get to the year 2066. So in this short select statement, we have got around 36, 37 years. So now I'm going to insert this, the results of this calculation, which I'll now put onto one row, one line, into my table time table. And I do that by going before it, insert into, the word into is optional, the name of the table, and then the field or column that I'm putting it into. So now this select will no longer run as a select statement here in the output. Instead, it is used to insert into this table time. And now I've got the output here. Now, suppose I didn't want a particular date. Suppose I just wanted 10 minutes past, 20 minutes past, and so on for one particular day. And I wasn't going to specify which day that is. Well, instead of using my time date time, I would say my time time. So now if I run this, we get a lot of zeros 
and then scroll down, we get 10 minutes, 20 minutes and so forth all the way through. So what's happening is that because this insert into is inserting into a table which has just a time as opposed to date time, it is doing an implicit conversion from date time into time before inserting this into here. And as we've got quite a number of years worth, so you can imagine there's a lot of 10 minutes past and 20 minutes past to insert. Now, obviously, I don't necessarily want hundreds or thousands of rows at zero minutes past midnight. I want just the one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this not implicitly, but explicitly. So I'm going to have control over it. So what I'm going to do is surround it with convert brackets or parentheses time. And then I have my expression and then close the brackets. So now if I run this, we seem to have exactly the same output and we do. It's just that the conversion has changed from an implicit, in other words, the computer doing it to an explicit. So I'm saying convert that please. So what's the advantage of this? Well, the advantage of this is now I can say distinct before it. So because this is an explicit conversion, I'm asking it to do it at this stage in the select statement instead of at this stage in the insert statement. So because I'm doing it here, I can now add the word distinct. It will do it as part of the select statement. And it is now just doing a distinct of the time element. So if I execute this now, you'll see that there are only 144 rows out of the hundreds of thousands of rows that you might have. And each number only comes up once. Now, suppose I didn't want it for every 10 minutes. I wanted it for every 20 seconds. No problem. I would add second instead of minute and change the 10 to a 20. And now we have got zero minutes past, 20 seconds, 40 seconds, one minute, one minute, 20 and so forth. Now, let's suppose I wanted to add some additional fields into my timetable. I wanted the hour, the minute and the second. So the hour. Would I use a big int, int, tiny int, small int, what would I use? Well, because hour will only go from zero to 23, all I need is a tiny int because that goes from zero to 255. We then have a minute and for the same reason, a tiny int and second, tiny int. Always use the smallest data type that you can, which will contain the valid values. So now I've got these new fields. I can now populate them by having an update statement. So update my table and I'm going to set my hour equals. Now in some versions of SQL, you could say hour open brackets and whatever your field or column is. However, you can't do that in SQL server, in TSQL. You can, however, use month and year and day, you just can't use hour, minute or second. Instead, you have to use the function date part, which is one word. So the first argument of date part is what you want to extract. So in this case, hour. So I'm also going to extract my minute exactly the same way. And if I press control and space, you can see all the options that I've got. So I can save a bit of typing here. And here we've got my second. So again, if I press control and shift, I can just start typing second and you can see it auto complete. So now if I run this again and the second part, here we can see time, hour, minute and second, and you can see that we've got no duplicates. It goes from midnight to just before midnight. So in this video, we've had a look at how to create a time table using date add, using explicit conversion and distinct and also row number. Now, if some of these are new to you, like for instance, the cross join, then why not join me in our course? So if you go to iddata.com, you can see that we've got free courses on SQL Server. 
And the top one, the 29 hour querying Microsoft SQL Server with TSQL, includes things such as date functions, row number, insert, and many more. And why not have a look at some of the other courses while you are there? I do data. Dot com. There'll be a link in the show notes. If you've got any comments or any videos you want me to create, then why not let me know in the comments. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thanks for joining and keep learning. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then why not give it a like and click that bell and subscribe. That way you'll be notified of any new videos. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Thanks for watching and keep learning.